Welcome back to part two of our exploration into the updated white paper. In our previous video, we delved into the backstory of Dagami and discussed the three phases of Dagami, along with the exciting new skills and talents outlined in the white paper. If you haven't watched that video yet, I recommend checking it out before continuing this one. Now, let's pick up where we left off and dive deeper into the Dagami Academy and its intriguing aspects. The white paper provides us with additional insights and gives us a glimpse of what to expect in the future. It states the following, Within these academies, you and your Dagami can improve your skills and unlock hidden powers by engaging in thrilling obstacle courses and competing to become the best. However, the academies have a hidden mission to prepare for the resurgence of dark forces by forming protector duos and recovering lost magical artifacts. Now, when we look at the academy, there are actually three activities that you can participate in, and I believe you will have multiple locations within these different activities. For example, you may be competing in time trials in Atlantis, Paris, Berlin, or New York. Now, the first activity we want to look at is the basic training activity. In these areas, you will be able to train to enhance one of the specific six skills. When you do a training, you will be rewarded with skill points. As we said in our previous video, the skill points are needed to move your Dagami skills to higher levels. And if you have special talents or higher ranked skills, you will get bonus skill points to get you to higher levels quicker. But to be able to participate in these trainings, you will need two different elements, star and energy. Now, from what I'm seeing currently, there are only a couple ways to earn skill points, and that is by engaging in these trainings or by leveling up your Dagami, which is done by earning XP. Since this is probably going to be the number one place for gaining skill points, you will need to figure out how to get the star, which is the in-game soft currency. The energy is easy because you will gain that automatically even when the app is closed. This is similar to a number of mobile games out there. You will have a limited amount of energy and once it is out, you are done doing activities until the energy replenishes or perhaps you buy more energy. But the star currency is able to be earned by competing in exhibition races. We'll talk about those in a second. But the challenge is that without skill points, you will not do as well in exhibition races, which means you will not earn as much star currency. But you will also be able to purchase star currency using Doga. We'll come back to star currency later and get into some of those details. So in summary, the basic training activity requires both energy and star currency, and it rewards you with skill points for a specific skill. And when the skill levels up, it will be saved in the metadata of the Dagami's NFT. The next activity is the exhibition races that we mentioned earlier. We've already seen some sneak peeks of what this will look like. These will be obstacle course types of races where you are competing against five other random level opponents. And the better your Dagami finishes, the more star currency and XP you will earn. This is the player versus environment style gameplay. Now, depending on which Dagami you have competing, you may or may not have a better chance of winning based on its level, but also the type of obstacles it will face and the breed you have that has better skills for those specific races. For example, if you have an obstacle course that involves water, those breeds that are better swimmers will probably have a better chance at winning due to their skill rank for that skill. You'll probably have breeds like the Golden Retriever and the Labrador Retriever doing better in swimming events. So this is where the management part of the game comes into play as you will have to use your brains to figure out the best dogs for the race that is taking place and the more Dagami you own, the better selection you'll have to choose from. This type of race only involves energy to compete in, but you will win star currency and XP, so you may spend a lot of time in these races trying to earn that star currency before heading to basic training. Then the third and probably most important activity is the time trials. This is where you will be competing against other Dogamers on a leaderboard for a chance to win Doga and XP. You will need star currency and energy to compete in these obstacle courses. It says these courses are only available for a limited time. I suspect what that means is that it will be switching to different types of obstacle courses frequently, which will allow different Dagami to have a better chance at winning based on the training you have been doing and the breed of your Dagami. This is again a benefit of having more than one breed of Dagami. 
So those are the three activities, but there are a couple other elements that will also help you in these races, and that is the consumables and relics. But the other skill you will need is to know which consumables and relics you would want to equip based on the different obstacles you will face in that race. It's given us four examples of the effects of some of these. The first one you can see is increased velocity by 20% during the race. And maybe that is a certain food that does that. The next one you notice increases all skills by 10%. So if a race has many different types of obstacles, that one may be very helpful. But if it was just a flat sprint, the 20% velocity would be a better choice. You can see the third one says increase speed by 50% for the first 30 meters of the race. So maybe you have a really good swimmer and that may allow you to get a big enough advantage so during the later portion of the race, your opponents can't catch up. But we also noticed that the last one says mildly increased training performance. So this must mean you will be able to use these in the basic training and not just the races. Now, the difference in the consumables and relics is fairly simple. The consumables are just that. They are consumed and have to be replaced. Once you eat the food, it's gone and the benefit only lasts for a certain period of time. The relics do not go away and can be earned as rewards or bought with star currency. But there will be a cooldown time after you use these before you can use them again. I suspect this may look something like our current gap accessories that don't go away. We'll have to wait and see, but these do seem like some special things that they are going to continue to develop over time. It says relics are mystical artifacts connected to the power of Dagami. It also says in a future update, you'll be able to collect mystical materials to improve the effectiveness of your relics by visiting ancient places or by dismantling useless relics. All right, let's get back now to talking about this star currency because there was definitely some confusion when this was initially released. So let's look at it to see if we can figure it out. First of all, the name star may be changed, so don't get too attached to that name. Second, this is not a cryptocurrency and is not replacing the Doga token. Doga is still the utility token and has a limited amount of supply. The star currency does not have a limited supply, and so it can be used for multiple things in game without having to worry about the effect on the Doga token. If you look at almost any other mobile game, you'll see multiple types of in-game currencies being used, and so it's not unusual to have more than one method of purchasing items. In many games, you'll purchase gems or coins with fiat money, and then those gems or coins can be used to purchase items in game. But those gems and coins don't convert back to fiat. The same is happening with the star currency. It can be purchased with Doga and then items be bought in game with the star, but it can't be converted back to Doga. This will also help with the circulation supply of Doga. In addition, there are certain regulations when it comes to app stores and they seem to continue getting tighter and this star currency allows the game to currently exist within the rules provided by the app stores. So in my personal opinion, this is a huge win for Dagami and not a negative thing. Now, the Doga token still serves in multiple ways, including, but not limited to purchasing Dagami, purchasing NFT accessories, purchasing star currency, and for paying for breeding fees when that arrives. Okay, that's enough about tokenomics. To wrap up this video, I wanna talk about two more items quickly, and the first one is the adventure mode that is planned. First, it says the name of this may change as it is developed. It's also important to note it's still in its early stages. So if we see this show up soon, I think we need to be patient because I don't think it will be fully built out. Something of that scale takes a long time and will need to expand along the way. It says it will enable players to roam and interact in a 3D map with their Dagami and environment. So this is one of the aspects that I think many felt was the initial thought behind Dagami. Let me just say, when things begin and ideas are started, you can't always go the originally intended direction and you have to make adjustments along the way. You can try and force something according to original plans, but more often than not, that will drive a plan into the grave. Dagami has made the difficult but necessary decision to detour a little from the original plan as it relates to the game, but that also doesn't mean they have changed their overall vision of a 360 degree brand that encompasses many different facets, including TV shows, merchandise, games, music, comic books, and working on interoperability. 
We will see the first iteration of that when your Dagami is able to portal into the voxel world and be part of the sandbox. This also doesn't mean that the original direction of the game can't be done, and this is what the adventure mode is all about. It's just not the first thing that is now happening, so I'd say just look at this as an alternate route to the same goal. And speaking of comic books, you may have known that it was coming and that it was going to be written by Valiant Comics, which was founded by the editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics, but you might not have picked up on the fact that the first comic book will be called Companions of Earth. Now, I expect we'll be seeing that first volume out real soon. There's a lot more in the white paper and I've not covered it all, so if there are certain things you'd like for me to hit on or comment about, feel free to leave it in the comments below and we'll see you next time.